friends will be off to new adventures you will see off to the center of the earth or the bottom of the sea so come with me to the center of the earth where life has started first so many things for us to learn solve the major mysteries that lie so deep within our precious world bottom of the sea, we're down so many leaves, just to find the proof we need, and the center of the earth, the center of the earth. Travel is what we like to do, our adventures old and new, they keep us strong. Why don't you help us set our sails? We'll discover many trails, so come along. We got Don and Tico too. With Ruby and new friends for you. Join me along with all my friends on a trip that never ends to many places old and new. To the center of the earth, where life is starting first. So many things for us to learn Solve the major mysteries That lie so deep within our precious world Episode 20, Prisoners on the Nautilus. Professor Aranax and Ned were with us when we were taken prisoner aboard the Nautilus, an amazing submarine captained by a strange man called Nemo. Being held against our will is not pleasant, and Ned has already been looking for ways to escape. Whilst the advanced technology aboard the Nautilus intrigued Monsieur Willy Fogg and Professor Aranax, the natural wonders of underwater life dazzled us all. We had no idea where the Nautilus was going or why Captain Nemo wished to keep us prisoner. All that we knew was that we were getting further and further away from our friends on the Abraham Lincoln. Our chances of being rescued were diminishing by the day. Yep, not bad. Now, huh? This is the galley of the Nautilus where all the food for the officers and crew is prepared. As you can see, there is enough here to keep an army well fed for months. You said earlier, Captain Nemo, that all the food you use comes directly from the sea. That is quite correct, Mr. Fogg. Every last morsel. Even the desserts we make come straight from the sea. Right, Sam? Yes, yeah, sir. Would any of you gentlemen care to sample a piece of this? I suddenly feel hungry. There you go. Um, it's a very funny. It's a taste a bit like, um... It's made almost entirely out of sea serpents. Ah, did you hear that, Rigodon? He said he made it out of snakes. I've been poisoned. I've been poisoned. I'm gonna die. I'm really gonna die. And what a stupid way to go. Oh, come on, Tico. Do not talk such nonsense. I am sure the food is quite delicious. You are not going to die just yet. Are you quite sure about that, Rigodon? Well, that's making me feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Not everything here is seafood. Hmm? Look, everybody, this is sugar. And this stew looks exactly like pork. I'm afraid you are mistaken, Princess. It's not pork, but shark's meat. And if you were to analyze that sugar, Professor, you would find that it's an extract made from different kinds of seaweed. I'm right, Sam, am I not? Yes, sir. That stew was made this morning with fresh shark meat. What? So there's nothing on board but shark's meat and seaweed? I don't suppose you happen to have a little omelette lying about the place, do you? Ah, my stomach is going crazy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well now, huh? 
I've really got you, Mr. Fogg, and this time the captain won't have any doubt that you're nothing but a thief. That is correct, gentlemen. And apart from being full of vitamins and nourishment, it is also very tasty. Tasty? Sure it's a tasty if you like a seaweed. This do needs something else. Well, maybe it needs some salt. Let me try. Yes, it just needs a little dash of salt to make it right. Ah, oh, yes, you're right, my friend. That salt was just what it needed. Captain, I wonder if you'd allow Rigodon to stay here and help me in the galley. You wouldn't regret it, Captain. Rigodon is the best cook I've ever known. He'll make the food on the Nautilus the best you've ever tasted. Very well, I will allow him to stay here and demonstrate his culinary prowess, but each new dish that's prepared must be tasted by me first. I like to know everything that's happening on board this ship. I'd be delighted, Captain, and the dishes you taste will make your mouth water. Hey, that sounds like a job for Tico. Excuse me, Captain, but I think that Rigadon is gonna need a kitchen boy, and I would like to volunteer myself. Do you agree, Captain Nemo? Very well, I agree. Tico can stay. Hey, thank you, Captain. I think my stomach is really gonna enjoy this job. <laughs> and now, gentlemen and princess, if you will follow me, I will show you the engine room of the Nautilus. This way, the engine is to the starboard. place to hang a lamb. <laughs> That'll do it. Now all I have to do is to accuse Willie Fogg of stealing the captain's gold, show the captain where to find it, and he will have no choice but to appoint me as first officer of the Nautilus. Are you quite sure you want to have a lie down, my dear? Oh no, Fogg, I didn't think he'd be back so soon. Yes, Willie, I think I should get some rest. It's been very exciting looking around the Nautilus, but I do feel quite tired now. Princess Romy! Ah, oh, Captain Nemo, your tour of this remarkable vessel has left me quite exhausted, I'm afraid. So if you'll excuse me. One moment, Princess. Whew! If I may suggest, before you retire, are you sure that you would not like to take this unique opportunity to see the facilities we have on the rest of the Nautilus? I can't wait. This is a very special craft. It sure is. It's so special, there's no way to get off it. I hope you will understand, Captain, but we have all enjoyed so many new experiences in the last 24 hours, and my wife is rather tired. <laughs> I think she may need some rest. And then she can join us later on, if you agree. Well, if you're really sure that that is what you want... I'm not sure now. I think... Yes, I think I will come with you. That's wonderful, Princess. Shall we go, Captain? I'm ready. Very well, Professor. If we are all ready, then follow me. Certainly. Whew! They've gone away at last. They took their time. Now then. <laughs> Ha! Ah. Now, things are gonna get pretty rough around here for you, Mr. Willie Fogg. Come on, Rigadon, I want my chef's hat. Uh, hurry up, and I want my omelette too. Uh, hurry up, everybody, hurry up, come on! Mon Dieu, Tico, you must be patient. Yeah, and while you're at it, little fella, why don't you just keep quiet? Here we are, Tico. I finished it. Now let's see what it looks like on you. Okay. Hey, what's happening? I wish the floor would keep still. It's like being at the fun fair, but it's not as much fun. Hey, whoa! Hey, who put the lights out? It's gone all dark. I'm gonna get out of here. Be right careful, Tico! Oh! Oh, Rigadon, help me. Someone to turn off the lights. And then hit me on the head. Rigadon, help me. Okay. I'm coming! Come on! Oh! Oh! Oh no, 
stop the ride. I want to get off. I don't like this fun pet anymore. Oh. Hey, now, don't worry. We're just diving to the bottom of the sea. The plane! My omelette! Catch it, Rigadon! Hey, bravo, Rigadon! You saved my omelette! Hey, Sam, how far is this ship got to go down? Because if I'd have known we were gonna have all of this rocking and rolling, I would have asked for a scrambled egg instead of an omelette. It would have been easier. Well, don't worry, Tico. We're leveling off, which means that Captain Nemo has reached the depth that he wanted to sail at. Well, gentlemen, now that I've explained how the propellants and the stabilizers and the onboard oxygen supply works, I should be delighted to show you the defense systems on the Nautilus, which are the most advanced and sophisticated in the entire world. This should be interesting. Hmm. Hmm. We are, as you can see, very well equipped to defend ourselves from attack by any other vessel whatsoever. I'm beginning to understand, Captain, and I see that the frigate Helvetia and all the other shipping that has been so severely damaged were victims of torpedoes fired from the Nautilus. Wrong, Mr. Fogg. The Nautilus was the victim, and she has to be defended against any attack. But do you not think, Captain Nemo, that those missiles are a little excessive for defensive purposes? It was legitimate defense. Just as legitimate as when I defended the Nautilus and myself from attack by the Abraham Lincoln. And I don't think that any of you can deny that that ship was following us. But we weren't following you, Captain. We were following some kind of sea monster. Or what we thought was a sea monster. We really didn't know what we were looking for. That's it. I gotta get off this rust bucket or else I'm gonna go stir crazy. <clears throat> hey, watch it. And where are you going, Musclehead? If you're trying to get off this ship, I have to warn you that you're heading for trouble. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe that's none of your business, Pea Brain. Sergeant, to you, Meathead. What appears to be the trouble here? This man was trying to escape from the Nautilus. I knew he was trouble the first time I set eyes on him. Shall I make sure he's locked up, Captain? No one has ever escaped from the Nautilus, Mr. Land, and you would do well to remember that. That understood. Yeah, well, I'm gonna be the first because I'm getting out of this tin can. You can see for yourself, Captain, he's nothing but trouble. And you're a pain in the neck, so how about we settle it right here and now, huh? Huh? Ah, ah. uh, see what's going on. The alarm has sounded, Captain! Oh no, an alarm! Oh dear, you Willy, what calm, does it mean? Really. It may be that there is nothing for us to worry about. Or it may mean that we are about to engage another ship in combat, Mr. Fogg. I hope you will all forgive me if we postpone our tour, but it seems I must attend to my duties as Captain of the Nautilus, as we may be under attack. Sound action station, Sergeant, and then come with me. Yes, sir, right away! Now hear this! Every man to his post! Action stations! I just hope it's a ship big enough and brave enough to scuttle this sardine can and send it to the bottom where it belongs, even though we are on board. <laughs> can you see it, Captain? Is it in range? Why don't we just get the torpedoes ready? Then we can blow it out of the water! I'm not sure what it is. I think the best thing would be if we were to surface. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain. Now look, I don't care where these eggs came from, all right? I don't care if they came from a chicken or a sea turtle or whatever. All I care is that this omelette is a saying to me, eat me. Bon appétit, mon petit gastronome. Ah! Hey, now what? Don't tell me, I know, the fun fairs are back in town, right? That's right, but we seem to be going up this time, I think. What's the matter? Can't this captain make his mind up with his up, down, up, down? It's making me crazy! <gasps> oh no, Tico! Ah! Uh. Well saved, mon ami. No one's gonna take my omelette away! Now, let's see if we can locate what it was that showed up on the submarine's directional scanner, shall we? Oh, Willie, isn't it a beautiful day? I do miss the sun when we're trapped down there so far beneath the sea. I agree, Romy, but we must all try to be patient for the moment. Yes, dear, I know. Take a deep breath, Professor. Smell that sea breeze. 
Now that's what a sailor should fill his lungs with, not the stale air that's floating around this tin can. You should be careful, my friend. They might overhear you. Well, I just don't understand it. We picked up something on our scanners, but now there's absolutely nothing out there. Captain, look over there! Dolphins. A false alarm. Rats! It's nothing but a school of stupid dolphins! Why couldn't it have been a big fat ship that our equipment detected? Then at least we could have gone into battle and sunk it! Tell the men to stand down, Sergeant. Just a school of dolphins. I must point out that dolphins are very intelligent animals, and they can be trained to perform many tasks, Captain. Oh, Willie, what's that? Ahoy there! Ahoy there! Hey, help us! We're over here! We need your help! What is it, Mr. Land? You surely don't think the dolphins can help you get off this ship? <gasps> it's a ship, Willie! That's right! Over there, in the distance! Hey, we've done it, Professor! We're safe! We're getting off! That ship has come to rescue us! I wouldn't be too sure about that! Why not? Well, the missiles... Exactly, Professor. Your friend Mr. Land seems to have forgotten the defensive systems on board the Nautilus. Right, you there, escort our guests back inside the Nautilus and make sure they're comfortable, whilst you, Sergeant, look after Mr. Land. Is that understood? Aye, aye, sir. Do you want me to tie that troublemaker up, Captain? No, Sergeant. I do not think that will be necessary. Hey! Hey! This is going to be very interesting. She's a frigate, and she's under full sail. Well, I hope they're prepared for battle, because they're about to find out they've got the Nautilus to deal with. Please obey the captain's orders and go below. It could be dangerous for all of you up here. But surely Captain Nemo isn't going to attack that ship. That would be madness. He must know there are innocent people aboard that ship. He would be committing murder. I'm sorry, Professor. I cannot say what the captain's intentions may or may not be. I obey orders, and I'm asking you to go below. Now, listen! I think you've made your point, Professor. Now, perhaps we should do as this gentleman tells us, for now. We'll be able to talk to the captain about it later. Well, if you say so, Mr. Fogg, I'm not happy. Mm hmm It is disgraceful behavior. Ahoy there, frigate! We're over here! Help us! Hey, pipe down, you big gorilla. You heard what the captain said. Why don't you beat it, numbskull? You should be very careful, my friend, or you might find yourself falling over the side of the ship. You understand? All right, I hear you. Now let go of me. Yeah, huh? well, I always knew that you'd see reason in the end. Now come on and get inside. Why don't you lie down and take a little nap and leave the fighting to us men? That frigate is getting too close to the Nautilus for comfort. Well, we shall just have to do something about that. Whatever happens, I cannot allow any vessel to come too close to the Nautilus. Well, this is it, Oliver. We're going into battle again. We're gonna see some action instead of playing babysitter to a bunch of snooping strangers. Well, I suppose you know what you're doing, Pat. You're the sergeant, after all, but it just doesn't seem right to me to fire on ships that haven't done anything to us in the first place. Ah, baloney. Captain Nemo knows what he's doing. We have to destroy any ship that gets too close. Everyone must learn to fear the Nautilus. Got it? Ten Sir! That frigate is well within range, Captain. A couple of torpedoes and that will be the end of her. We're ready and waiting. All you have to do is just give the order. Very well, let's have a look. They still seem to be following the same course as us. There is no doubt about it. We are going to have to take some action. Before they get too close, we ought to open fire and blow them out of the water. Very well, Sergeant. Order the torpedoes to be prepared for immediate launch. Aye, aye, Captain. Prepare torpedoes one and two for launching. Hmm. Torpedoes one and two, ready for launching at your command, sir. Torpedo room standing by, Captain. As soon as you give the order, she's as good as sunk. Captain, I sincerely trust that you do not intend to fire on that ship. That's right, Professor. Why? Don't you like the idea? I guess you're just a little too sensitive. Young man, it doesn't take sensitivity to realize that this is just cold-blooded murder. I'm afraid, Professor, that that ship is following our exact course. And if we do nothing about it, it could find us, so we have very little choice. But surely, Captain, your problem could be solved by simply altering your own course slightly. That way, no one need get hurt, and the Nautilus would remain undiscovered. Don't interfere in things that do not concern you, Mr. Fogg. 
If you cannot take orders on the bridge, you will have to be removed. Stand by. The frigate is very nearly in range. 45 degrees. You may give the order to fire when ready. Aye, aye, sir. Standing by. Make sure you get it first time. I don't want any mistakes with this. Set missiles to 45 degrees and prepare to fire. Fire one! Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to stand by and let you sink an innocent ship. Hey, what's the matter with you, you crazy? <laughs> What's going on down there? Oliver, get that big oaf out of the torpedo room now. Aye, aye, Captain. I just knew that knuckle-headed gorilla would foul things up for us again. Well done, Ned. I was sure he would think of something. Well, you've done it now. You've made me fire that torpedo without the angle or the direction of it being set. I'm glad I did it. Let me take care of that harpooner, Captain. He needs locking up. It's his fault that the ship has been warned and we've lost a good torpedo into the bargain. If it weren't for Ned the Harpooner, an innocent ship would be lying at the bottom of the sea. Indeed, I couldn't agree more, Professor. It was a very brave thing to do. The ship's out of range now. We've lost her. We must leave this area immediately, and it looks as though we shall have to take steps against Mr. Land before he causes us any more trouble. Do you understand, Sergeant? You needn't worry, sir. I'll take care of Mr. Land. Well, gentlemen, I hope you're satisfied. I suppose you realize what your foolish friend has done by letting that ship escape? He managed to avoid a terrible catastrophe and save the lives of innocent people. I disagree with you, Mr. Fogg, but we shall discuss it later at supper. Right now, I have some important business to attend to, if you will excuse me. Captain Nemo! I have to speak to you urgently, Captain. Captain, wait! What is it, Sergeant? I have something of interest to show you. Go oh, later. I haven't got time right now. It's very important. All right, but this had better be good. It's about Mr. Fogg. There's something in his luggage I think you should see, Captain. Please, after you, Captain. What? It's gold, Captain. Gold from the Nautilus. It can't be. I don't believe it. You have to believe what you see with your own eyes, Captain. I've been watching Mr. Fogg very closely, and there's no doubt about it. He's a thief. It certainly looks that way, but we must be careful. It's the second time this sort of thing has happened, and we must wait for Mr. Fogg to make his next move before we act. Whatever you think best, Captain. In the meantime, I shall continue to investigate our Mr. Fogg and find out everything I can about what he's up to. And I would just like to add, Captain, should you wish to appoint me first officer of the Nautilus... What? I've got better things to think about than your promotion, Sergeant. Now get back to your post immediately. Will Captain Nemo believe that Monsieur Willy Fogg has stolen his gold? And what other evil plans does Sergeant Pat have in store for us? And how will Monsieur Fogg fare against the terrifying creatures of the deep as he investigates far beneath the ocean waves? It is a place where no one can hear your cry for help and where you never know what treachery lies ahead.